wonderful to see all of you here with us tonight. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at honey and copying images for your assignments and presentations. Uh, we're going to look at some helpful tips for copyright, fair dealing, creative common, creative commons licenses, and a few other things as well. So let's get started. So what do we mean by images? And as you can see from what in front of us, we are looking at things like photographs, arts and icons, um, infographics, as well as graphs as well. Um, some of these that you, I'm sure you've seen uh, in your time searching the internet, and I'm sure you, you've seen icons, or sorry, uh, digital images similar to this, you, and you've seen some of the places where we've taken it from, if you notice we're citing them down below. So let's go into the next slide. and let's. Say, let's talk about what do we mean by copyright. So by reading this, you realize that copyright is the sole and exclusive right of a copyright owner to produce, reproduce, perform, publish, adapt, translate, and telecommunicate a work, and to, and to control the circumstances in which others may do any of these things. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that the owners of these could be anywhere from an author or creator. Um, it could also be the author or the creator's uh, employer if it was created for an employment. Uh, it could also be for um, an author, creator, for that matter, a publisher, or even a publisher only upon the agreement of the actual author giving those rights to them. So copyright gives content, content creators control over who can copy, share, and sell their work. Creators can thus make a living from creating, licensing, and selling their work. Um, feel free to be very creative and, of course, to have your work all copyrighted uh, or copyrighted. Um, the key thing to keep in mind is that if you do create something, you do need to have it um, uh, copyrighted by, for in Canada, the Canadian Intellectual Property Office, uh, so make sure that you visit them. Uh, this is, will include things such as images and other media, and there are penalties when you don't um, start by taking or at least adhere to the laws of the copyright. For non-commercial infringement, the, the fees can range anywhere from 500 to 5,000, but for commercial, you're looking at as high as 20,000. So did you know that ideas cannot be copyrighted? <coughs> uh, copyright protects the original works or images that express an idea, but the idea itself cannot be copyrighted. So no, you can actually there. recreate graphs and tables from actual raw just data there, yeah. without infringing on the copyright of the original creator for that. Uh, copying the ideas of others without giving credit, however, is plagiarism. So make sure that you stay away from that as much as you can. Always provide credit for the original source or idea um, and data when writing a paper or creating charts and diagrams. And the library is a great place uh, we do have on our website uh, web pages that have been created that will teach you the different ways to cite your sources to avoid plagiarism as much as possible. Now, the Copyright Modernization Act, um, which is Section 30.04, it does allow educational institutions such as this one for educational purposes to reproduce, save, download, and share publicly available materials that are on the internet, uh, use certain conditions. Um, you can reproduce an entire image from the internet as long as the website is not questionable or is not using third-party material without the copyright owner's consent. Um, to content, the content is not behind a password protected or, all, or otherwise restricted, uh, or is otherwise restricted from public ac um, access. There is not a clearly visible posting on the website that prohibits educational use and not merely the copyright symbol itself. And you do not want to break or circumvent a digital lock to obtain a copy of the material. You provide proper citation for the images at all times. Um, we do actually have quite a few resources on the library's website as well to help with things such as images that you might be looking for. Uh, also, if you, there are movies or um, videos that you wanted to incorporate in your presentations, we do actually have some websites that would, or web pages rather, that we put together that would help the students to get through uh, their times here at, at MSVU to make sure that they don't fall into that trap. So fair dealing um, within the copyright law is a right within limits to reproduce portions of copyrighted material without having to seek permission or pay the copyright owners. 
Now, the purpose of the proposed copying, including whether it is for education, research, private, study, review, criticism, news reporting, parody, or satire. And again, a lot of these could be done through some of your classes as well, um, mainly because uh, that uh, this is a, a learning institution, so of course there's very many, there's a lot of different ways for you to represent your work uh, or your assessment of the work that you have been given. The character of the proposed copying, including whether it involves single or multiple copies, or whether the copy is destroyed after it is used for its specific intended purpose. So this is again the you're going to you're going to be able to use without seeking the permission of that copyright owner under fair dealing. The amount of portion of the work which is proposed to be copied and the importance of that work. Alternatives uh, to copying the work, including whether there is a non-copyrighted equivalent available. The nature of the work, including whether it is published or unpublished, and the effect of the copying on the work, including whether the copy will compete with the commercial market of the original work itself. So the view to generate content exceptions to the copyright law are under Section 29.21 of the Copyright Act, the Canadian Copyright Act, sorry. It is not an infringement uh, of copyright if an individual, for an individual to use existing works in the creation of a new work. So I'm sure um, you've probably seen some mashups uh, on YouTube, <laughs> um, something that you can definitely um, take a look at and, and you can see the difference between, or at least see for that matter, um, how that an, an old creation could be, an old work can be used as an, in a new creation. It must be solely for non-commercial purposes. You must cite all the sources that you used. Do not use material acquired through a content or license that prevents using the item in a mashup, such as iTunes and iStock Photo. Um, uh, do not break a digital lock using the material. Example, you should definitely never rip a DVD that has encoding that prevents copying. And it must be original. Now, the mashup cannot be substitute for or does not have a substantial adverse effect, financial or otherwise, on existing work. So you can put the mashup together, and as long as it's not infringing on any of, their, of the original work's ability to either earn money or to be utilized in, in any particular way or it infringes on the copyright, then you're, you're fine. So looking at the Creative Commons licenses themselves, um, these are alternatives to copyright. So with the Creative Commons licenses, you're looking at you're looking at a nonprofit organization that enables creators to share their materials via a set of copyright licenses. Um, these standardized licenses that give the public permission to share and use works based on the rights the creator has given. So the rights vary from some rights reserved to all rights reserved. And the user must read the accompanying license to know what the material can be used. Looking at the symbols on this page, you'll notice that there is the word attribution that is stated here. And attribution means that you are giving the actual citation or the name of, of the source whenever you're using it. So here we have the different licenses. So we have uh, this particular, the first one here uh, on the top left. This license lets others uh, distribute, remix, tweak, and build upon your work, even commercially, as long as they credit you for the original creation. Um, this is the most accommodating of the licenses offered and recommended for maximum dissemination and use of licensed materials. But just below that, we also have the, the other one, which is attribution non diverse, and this one allows for redistribution, commercial and non-commercial, as long as it's passed along unchanged and in whole with credit to you, the person who created it. The one below that um, is the attribution for non-commercial share-alike, and this license lets others remix, tweak, and build upon your work non-commercially, as long as they credit you and license their new creations under the same identical terms. I see a question coming in. Uh, do people pay less for these? licenses attribution on uh, oh for number one for the first one that we spoke of do they pay less for it ah. I'm unsure I can absolutely look that up um, um, if Denise might know can, that uh, answer however in like I'll invite her to come in hello and hello? can you hear me I can barely hear you. Ah, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. 
Hello? Hello? Okay. Um, hopefully I'm a little bit clearer now. Uh, yeah, this, uh, the whole um, idea behind the uh, Creative Commons license is that it's free. The, uh, the person who has the copyright and therefore is the, has the, the right to um, you know, sell permission is actually giving up some of those rights or making them available to other people. So that's why there's all the different levels. So when you see this uh, Creative Commons, it's that the people who took the pictures or the chart or did the artwork, they're actually giving you permission without having to pay to use it. And then they, they're saying that what they want instead is either you must credit them or as you can see in some of the other permissions, they're saying, okay, you can use my work but you can't uh, change it, or you can use my work, but only if it's non-profit. You can't use it to put on t-shirts and sell. So, but the whole idea about Creative Commons is that uh, people are using it so that you don't have to ask permission, and, and the intention is that it's free for use, as long as you live up to your end of the bargain and, and do what they have said. Now, for instance, if you used it for commercial purposes and they had told you only non-commercial, they could um, kind of then um, get a court case against you for breaking that license. So you want to pay attention to the, um, the conditions by which they're letting you use the, uh, their artwork for free. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Um, so as we continue looking at the Creative uh, Commons licenses, and again, we know that they're free, uh, we'll look at the ones in the top right-hand corner. Um, now, this particular license over here, which is the attribution share alike, uh, this one lets others to remix and, of course, tweak and build upon your work, even for commercial purposes, as long as they credit you and license their new creations under the identical terms. Um, so again, a lot of these are giving you the ability to either uh, recreate or use it um, for your own personal use, or some of them will let you tweak it and, and, and remix it and, and distribute it, and you can use it commercially as well. The license is often compared to copy left, free, um, and open source software licenses. Um, all, all new works based on your works, on yours, will carry the same license. So any derivatives will also allow commercial use as well. Now, this license is used by Wikipedia and is recommended for materials that would benefit from incorporating content uh, from Wikipedia and similarly licensed projects. The one before that is the attribution non-commercial. Now, this license lets others remix, tweak, and build upon your work non-commercially. And although their new works must also acknowledge you and be non-commercial, they don't have to license their derivative works in the same on the same terms. So you can make changes to it and then license it slightly different and then license it differently from what the original work was. I apologize. Uh, Abdul which example of uh, the one that we just spoke about, the non-commercial attribution, is that one you'd like an example for? Off the top of my head, I can actually say that I that I don't think can think of one off the top of my head. Denise, can you think of one? Well, we'll be having examples soon when we uh, go to uh, Flickr and um, the right. The uh, so we'll we'll actually be giving you some practice at at finding these so that you can look for either charts or images for use in your assignments and then you'll actually be able to see examples when we do that exercise. Okay, perfect. Uh, and the last one on this list, of course, is the attribution non-commercial non, non Uh This license is the most uh, restrictive of our six main licenses, only allowing others to download your works and share them with others as long as they credit you, but they can't change them in any way or use them commercially. So these are the, the six main ones that you'll see are all for, for Creative Commons licenses, um, and I mean, they, if you are creating works here as a student, then definitely this is something you should pay attention to so that you yourself would be able to utilize them. 
So this is a Creative Commons, or at least a, a screenshot of it. So if you click, if you if you click on on the actual link or you go to it, uh, this is a human readable summary. Um, and you're looking at the license. You're free to share, adapt. Uh, for any purpose or even commercially in the license, I cannot revoke these freedoms as long as you follow the license terms. So where to search for photos for use in your assignments? Now this is something that will probably come up time and time again um, as you go through your university career. Flickr.com, uh, how many people have heard of Flickr? A lot or a little? I see quite a few yeses coming up. A little. Wonderful. So the advantage is that never used but heard of. Wonderful. OK. Um, each photo has the type of licenses that covers it on the page. So you'll actually see what you're allowed to do with that, that particular um, image. The disadvantage, however, depends on the person uploading the photo to choose the correct license. So some people may not have a good understanding of the Creative Commons license, and they may click on, some, on a particular format of it that may limit your ability to do any changes or utilize it. Um, but that's, you know, again, that's something that they can probably uh, fix. Or at least if they read through, they will be able to figure out which one. Now, Wikipedia has the advantage, because I'm sure everyone has heard of Wikipedia and has used it at some point in time, uh, only uses images that are um, that are Creative Commons or in the public domain. It's addition, in addition to photos, it contains charts and maps and graphs as well. Now, the disadvantage, as with all content, please critically evaluate images for accuracy before using. Um, that would basically mean that you you can like you can absolutely look at the information there, and you can read through and look at the the photos, but you still need to also check to make sure that it is current, it's relevant, it's accurate information, and of course, if you can find out who took the picture, that would be great as well, uh, and for the purpose as well. Um, now, Google Images and Bing Images. Um, and again, most people probably would be more familiar with Google Images over Bing, but it is uh, something that is uh, popular um, based on the agreement between, I believe, Bing and uh, Microsoft 365. So the advantage is that it's easy to use with filter for Creative Commons. Uh, the disadvantage, however, uh, unclear how Bing and Google filter to Creative Commons licenses. Many copyrighted images still appear in their Creative Commons search results, so they're giving you everything, not just one thing. So here is a screenshot of Flickr. Um, and again, for those of you who have utilized it, this is a very common, or at least you, you're seeing something that you're, that you're very familiar with. And here inside Flickr, you'll see the images pop up. And you notice that any license is right here. And if you do the drop down arrow, it will show you uh, you can you can select and they'll show you either any license that has that is for any of the images that are there. It can then show you the US government works or the non copyright restrictions. It'll also show you all of the Creative Commons ones. So here we have on Flickr a, a picture and you're seeing that uh, it was taken on November fourteenth, two thousand and nine. You're seeing the little icon in the corner. Uh, some rights are reserved for this as well. Um, and again, you you notice how many times it's been viewed, the phase, and of course the comments on it too. So going back, oops, yes. So going back to this. So again, this symbol is the attribution. You must give appropriate credit to wherever you got that image from. Uh, so uh, provide a link to the license and, of course, indicative changes were made. Uh, you may do so uh, in any reasonable manner, but not in any way that suggests that the licensor endorses you or your use. Now looking at Wikipedia, again, a favorite for many people to use, not a bad site. Of course, make sure that you always you go through and you look at the information and that you assess and evaluate it to ensure that where they got their information from is correct. And of course, you see the image on the side here. 
And of course, uh, the Wikipedia uses uh, public domain and creative common licenses. So if you look at the graph on the side, the next slide is going to take a closer look at that one for you. So here we have a common Wikimedia, wikimedia.com. Uh, if you notice, it is telling us uh, information about the graph as well as where it got it from, the NSA GISS. Um, we're also looking at uh, the, the, the link to get to it as well, where you got the graph. So Google Images Search. If you did such a thing, then you may end up, this is probably a very familiar um, site to see. So if you did one for privacy, should we use academic, apologies, uh, everyone. Uh, someone is asking a question. Um, should we use academic sources? Academic sources for finding images. Information. Well, some people are joining us a little later. Uh, apparently, they had some internet their connection problems. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Abdul uh, I'm unsure about, how, about your question here. Uh, when you say academic sources, are you looking for academic sources for the, for the images? Or in your paper? For information. If you're, if you're, if the details of the paper states that you should be using academic sources, then absolutely. Um, for in this case, the Google Images search, um, which is where looking at the images itself, there are various places that you can find it. You just need to be careful and know what to look for to ensure that you're getting images that are open source for you. So they're Creative Commons. They're, you're not infringing on any uh, licenses or copyright. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, uh, feel free to come see us at the library or send us an email. Um, so oh, you're very welcome. Uh, so here, so we're looking at privacy. And again, there's lots of ways that you can filter your, your, your keyword searches. So here we've shown the drop down arrow. We're looking for, um, you're looking at not filtered by license, labeled for reuse with modification, labeled for reuse, labeled for non commercial reuse with modification, labeled for non commercial reuse. You can select these to help you figure out which ones that you'd like to have come up in the search results. And here we have uh, an image. Um, and if you notice, it's a JPEG, which is a type of, of way that you can save an image. Slide. So here we have Bing, um, and this is the one that you can search using Microsoft Office. I'm sure some of you have tried this before. Any, uh, has anyone tried using Bing to search for an image? OK. And Denise, am I correct that this is going to be part of the assignment, uh, or at least the practice that, that we're going to be doing? Oh, no, just that it's the, um, if they've ever used the online images in Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint, that's what it is. OK. Uh, all right, I'm, I was trying to see if I can demonstrate, but it's not letting me drag over my uh, Easily, I should say, drag over uh, what I'd like to try. Uh, however, it is, not, it is something that you can definitely um, try at when you are inserting an image and you're saying insert from the internet, this is where you're going to be, this is what you, they will search for you using Bing, and the, the images will, will come up um, as a result. And a few people have indeed tried it, which is lovely. Uh, and for those who have tried it, did you enjoy using it? Was it easy or was it difficult? Okay. 
Uh, so, um, so when you are doing a Bing search, uh, it is available, like I said, through Microsoft Office. The responsibility lies with you to find out if you can use that image. So you will go through and you have to do your due diligence of actually reading through and seeing where that information, where the image came from. Um, and of course, most of them will be searched under the Creative Commons, but sometimes they will put in ones that are not. So using one of the following sites, uh, I would like everyone to find a Creative Commons licensed image or chart that you can use for any purpose with, of course, proper citation. Uh, place a link to the image in the chat area, and then we can take a look at a few of them and see if we've been successful in doing so. So you're going to use, so that everyone should be looking one for Google, one for Wikipedia, and one from Flickr as well. Hi, um, can you hear me? Please, um, can you repeat yourself again because I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. I, yes, we, we can hear you. Um, we're, so we're saying right now we'd like everyone to practice uh, using one of the following sites. So you, sorry, actually using all three of the sites. Um, you're going to find a Creative Commons license image or chart that you can use for any purpose, and again, with proper citation. So first, go to Google, uh, Google Images, and then look for a Creative Commons um, image there or a chart, and then do the same thing in Wikipedia and the same thing in Flickr, and put the link in the image area. <laughs> So we'd like the, the links to go into the chat area. And sorry, I may have confused it by um, putting the Google image for you to the <laughs> Flickr <laughs> uh, link for you to get to Flickr Wikipedia. You want to actually um, put the, uh, the link to the image that you find? Maybe um you should do a, a a demonstration of what we what we mean. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. If you want. Uh, just one second. I'm trying to. That's very really cool. I see somebody use the Noun project. That's uh, so that's another neat uh, site that has some uh, more like icons rather than images. But that's a really neat resource to know about. That is very nice. And then we have one. That's I'm having trouble uh, cutting and pasting it into the chat room. Um, yeah, well, yeah, let's me too. Me, me too. I'm having a problem posting um, the link. I don't know why. Okay, that's a 
actually, we could do just a, a quick little uh, demonstration with Flickr. So I'm just going to share my uh, browser with you. One second. Great. So, can you see my uh, uh, Flickr on my browser? Yeah. So here, let's see if we wanted to have a picture of spring, the season. We can just uh, search for it. And of course, the default is to give us any license, but we want to change that so that we're looking for the uh, Creative Commons license. And then once we we find one that uh, that we like, we can just uh, scroll down just to make sure you can see here uh, some rights reserved. Um, and if you want to see the license, you click on it, and then you can see okay, just non-commercial use. We can't change it, and we must always give credit. So you just want to check what it is. But now we're free to to download this, um, you know, there's a download button that we can download and use this um, for as long as it's a non-commercial use, which uh, education would uh, fall under. But to to just get the um, the the link, I mean, you could just sort of um, copy the the link from here. And then just paste it into the uh, the Moodle chat, and you can just do Control V, you know, just uh, copy, and then um, you can just then paste it that way. Um, does that does that help? Yes, that's what I was doing, but it wasn't working. Ah. Uh, and you know, <laughs> sometimes with these online sessions, <laughs> sometimes things don't uh, um, work the way that we hope to. And I, I have run into that problem in, in some sessions. But we could take a look at some of what, ah, that's a, that's a cute one. And again, you're just looking <laughs> for the uh, uh, <laughs> some rights reserved. Um, if it's, um, Completely uh, copyrighted, I would say all rights reserved. So the the magic words here are the some rights reserved. And again, you can see depending if it's just they want just the name credited, it'll just have this thing. If it's non-commercial, uh, you know, you can see that there's more symbols, and then you just. Click on the uh, the some rights reserved to, to find out what are exactly all the details that they are approaching. Ah, oh, yeah, lovely pictures of the dogs. <laughs> uh, I'm seeing some really good ones are coming up here, Denise. Uh, some people have found some very lovely photos of pets. Actually, I'm just going to go back to the uh, the Wikipedia one again. Just where you want to look for um, the the rights, because again, the the thing that uh, Roxanne and I and I want you to get across is that you are sort of responsible for checking to make sure the images that are here do have this Creative Commons license attached to them. If something doesn't have it on, it you, we don't know if permission has been given or not, so you always want to look on the page, and you can see by my mouse here that you know they they are verifying that it's um, Creative Commons. And again, um, as Roxana said earlier, Wikipedia is really good for when you want to look for charts and diagrams. They have that more so than any of the other sites we've shown. But I will um, stop sharing and turn it back to <laughs> Roxana. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, so we've done. I've seen the ones from Wikipedia and from um, 
from Flickr. Did anyone try? I've seen a few of the Google ones. Uh, I'm just going to grab one and bring it up. Uh, as soon as my computer will let me do so. There we go. Have it open. I did have one open. <laughs> and suddenly it is not working anymore. Apologies. I have a lovely one here of puppies and I'm trying to share it. That someone has given us. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm hoping everyone can see the puppies right now. They are very cute. So uh, clicking on the tools um, icon uh, or the actual uh, button uh, will give you the usage rights drop down and you can filter it now so that you can either filter for reuse, filter with modification, um, <laughs> label for non commercial I'm guessing we all like dogs. <laughs> that's that's good. Um, for non commercial reuse with modification, label for non commercial reuse at all. And and you can go through and simply click on it and it will refilter it for you each time. Uh, so you can search for exactly what you're looking for and, and then feel free to also, you know, if you'd like to search for maybe dogs with the color orange that are labeled for use, you absolutely can do so. Same thing with size and type and time. Uh, so we're just looking at any time right now, but in the past 24 hours, nothing. Puppies are cute and is it, it is spring starting, so you'll see lots of dogs out with their owners, especially at the parks. So I'm going to Stop sharing that. And I've gotten, like I said, some of you have given some really great uh, images. I'm just looking right now at uh, one that is a boat, which is lovely. So we're back here. That's sad. Oh dear. All right. So moving forward. Uh, well, I I'd also like to now take you to henai.com, which is... Um, I, I just noticed that a few people had posted um, some sites that were just images, but didn't have the Creative Commons symbol on it. So you do want to make sure that you you are... F um, that you, you need to see that symbol on it. If you don't see the symbol, it probably isn't uh, um, available for sharing for your assignment. So just to make sure to, to look for that symbol. Yeah, so... Uh, so, the, so anyone who's, who went through the, the Google site um, and you just search for images, make sure that you always select the Tools um, button that's on the upper right-hand side. Uh, and what will happen is that you'll be able to see labels. Um, that you'll see the, the labels that will come up that will allow you to see which ones are licensed, which ones are not licensed, and which ones you can reuse with or without m m uh, modifications or that are commercial and non-commercial. Uh, that way it will help you just to narrow down your images a little bit better to make sure that you can find 
the symbol for co for copyright. Sorry, for Creative Commons on it. Um, let's scroll down a bit. Asim, can you hear me now? Wonderful. Uh, now, Hussein is asking, "What is the assignment again?" Um, we just we just did it, which is ah. <laughs> Uh, which is basically we are we looked at we tried our hand at finding some Creative Commons um, images uh, using Flickr and uh, Wikipedia and Google images. And right now we're going to take a look at the tineye.com, which is the reverse image lookup. And just give me one second here. I'm going to open it up. and see who will let me share. No speaking right now. We're just trying to get the sharing working, but we will yeah. re resume very shortly. Yes. So sorry about this. Uh, okay. I think I've gotten it. Let me go ahead and do this and minimize, and let's see if my share will work now. And no. My guy. Right. So I need to do this. All right, so um, so everyone should be able to see the actual, I guess you could say the home page for the 10 i and I'm just going to grab an image uh, from anywhere in, in Google, basically, um, and I'm going to go to let's go with this one. So you're gonna you can either upload the actual image itself or you can get the URL, and then of course you put you search for it. I know what it will do. It will bring back the images, um, or at least uh, it will give you the information um, that came from that search. So we're making sure that those images are going to be uh, going through the Creative Commons. I hope everyone can see this uh, image that I have up here, which is coming from the Lang langwinlaurel.com site. So anytime you have an image that was given to you or you found on the internet and you're not sure about the the whole creative commons of it or if it's just copyright, feel free to use Tenai in which to search um, to ensure that it is correct and, and that you can use it and you're not going to be infringing on, on any particular rights. Any questions on this at all? All right then. So moving on, I'm just going to X this, and hopefully this will get back open. Lovely. All right, and we will stop sharing. So now there is. So as we are looking through those results, uh, we are seeing that there's there's different amounts of results that you're probably going to get back depending on what image that you will look for. Um, and if you notice, it, it's going to give you quite a bit of information so that you can do some comparisons and know where they came from. Here, we're looking for the image uh, of the privacy. And there's like 331 results. 26 results belong to image collections. Um, and it searched uh, over 13 billion images in order to find it. And down here, you'll see the image for uh, that came from Flickr, and of course the 
I guess you could say the image tag um, numbers that were given the identification. Uh, it's a JPEG, the photo itself, the page that you get it from. And just going on. So normally we would pause here and if you had any questions at this point. Um, but we're going to continue forward. But feel free at any point in time, if you have any questions, please come to the library and ask us if you're unsure about an image that you're about to use or a graph or a chart, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, we are here to help you. Paste an image and the results come up to the end of heaven. So Rebecca has a good question for us. If you paste an image, a picture into there and no results come up, does that mean that it hasn't been published online? Was the pen, so the picture itself, was it something that you took or is it a picture that you found online? Because if it, it was if it was found online, then it normally would have some form of a home that it can go back to that can be searched. But if it was a picture that you took, then that's a different story. And I'm going to ask Denise, of course, if that has ever come up in the past where she might have been searching for an image and or, or looking at Tinai and looking for an, at an image or a picture and nothing has come up or no results have come up. Um, I have have a, that one, Denise? Um, usually the types of things that we might be um, looking for is, you know, sometimes professors want to use images in their PowerPoints and such, and they just are seeing us if we could double check to make sure they're not, you know, stealing uh, or in sort of violating um, copyright. So they're usually sort of common popular photos that we've been searching on. Uh, now it is possible, you know, like with all search engines, they, they kind of are trolling over what is publicly available. It could be that that image was locked down behind a firewall, maybe at a photography site that, you know, is keeping things behind a password. So it's not going to necessarily show up in TinEye, but it's, you know, um, it does exist. It is copyrighted. It's just, um, you know, behind a, a, a heavy duty it's firewall. Private. So that's, you, you want to be careful. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, I hope that helps to answer the question. Again, there's, there's many ways that probably those um, images may not come up with any results. Um, but again, if, if they are private, as Denise said, or they are personal, it may not ever have just been published online. Uh, and it just, it just wouldn't come up on Tinai because of that. Uh, now, when it comes to copying images, there are a couple of best practices that we'd like you to keep in mind. Always use caution and check the copyright statements or terms of use for each site. Um, I announced, so Maria now has a good question. Are screenshots okay to use? Now, Maria, are, are those screenshots going to be of the images themselves? Because if that's the case, then no. But if it's a screenshot, perhaps, of work that you're doing on your computer, that is your individual work, a little, uh, just a tad bit more clarification is, is uh, to the question. Sometimes. So I, I think sometimes, Ray, you need to think about, you know, is it fair? What's the purpose you're using it for? Um, you know, I, you know, so I think it, it's an excellent question, and you, it helps to think it through in terms of um, how much of the image is coming in, how much of the content from the website are you capturing? Um, it, those kind of questions, and actually Roxana is going to be talking about that sort of analysis of whether it's a fair copy or not coming up soon. Yes. Although, did you mention that before, the fair dealing? Uh, we did mention it earlier. Um, ah, okay. So, yes, so this is finished. one of those fair dealing kind of questions. Exactly. Uh, and which is why I was asking is like, what was the image itself from the screenshot um, that was going to be used? Uh, so, but, it, but regardless of that, actually, um, it's, it's a very good question. And it does go, get us back to the idea of always using caution um, to check the copyright statements in terms of use for each of the sites, as well as to make sure that things like screenshots could be used, depending on what it is that you're screen shooting. Uh, note, permission to use images is often located on the website's fine print, which I know many of us never read, um, such as the terms of use of the legal notices. I 
don't think I know the terms of use of half the things that I'm uh, associated with. Uh, check the terms for restrictions or limitations, though. Um, and then read all the condi conditions before clicking OK. It's, it's something that we should, uh, in this digital age, get used to doing a lot more often. But there, it's just so, so much to read sometimes. Um, so use images that are in the public domain or are licensed for use. Again, example, Creative Commons licenses. And now I believe that each of you have a better idea of what to look for on those images and to recognize the symbols. So the public domain will be works um, under the public domain uh, because the term of copyright protection has expired, usually 50 years after the death of the creator. Um, for the actual copyright itself, it's usually uh, the life of the person as up to and then the year that, they're, that they've died the, to the end of that year, and of course, add the 50 years. For Creative Commons, um, it is a nonprofit organization that, as I said earlier, that provides, that offers free legal copyright tools that helps authors to modify their copyright terms, often making it clear the, the conditions under which images and content can be reused. Uh, Wikipedia Commons uh, only contains images that are free to use and share, uh, same principle that guides Wikipedia itself, and materials for which the, the mount also already has a license or permission. For example, the EBSCO um, image uh, database that we have that's available on the library's website, uh, either under the databases A to Z or in guides A to Z. Uh, so the mounts list of Creative Commons collection. Um, this would be under the multimedia resources, um, and you can get to this particular uh, area using um, a number of ways, actually. Uh, and if you are familiar with the, the library's website, you'll be able to find it. Um, however, we can take a quick look. So I'm just seeing people coming in and going out, coming in and going out. Uh, don't hit the X button, people. Don't 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 hit, hit the X. Uh, one second, let me just see if I can bring that up, and I can show you where to find that. So I'm going to share this web page. Minimize. Okay, so let's try that again. All of the sharing. I did. I did. It's really huge right now. Okay. I'm hoping everyone can see this page for the library. If you go to research guides and go click on multimedia resources, uh, audio, visual, and images, then you'll get to this page here. And on the left hand side where it says finding images, this is where you're going to have the finding uh, the helper resources for finding images that the library has put together for you, as well as the Creative Commons image collection, and then specialized image collections, and of course images from the Mount Larry database through EBSCO as well. Uh, uh, Liz, your mic. It says that your mic is on. Is de it's delayed? Actually, it just says delayed. Uh, not certain as to why, but you can definitely turn it off, and that might help. Oh, wonderful! All right. So moving on to. So now that we've seen this particular area, again, this is a great 
uh, site or a source for you to find images for those projects that you have coming up as well as the presentations that you might need to do for classes. You don't need to go very far in order to find the images uh, and sites that have been vetted by the library. Always cite your sources. Um, indicate the title, the creator, the source of each image. And if you're using the image in an assignment, check which citation style is required. There are many citation styles. The two main ones I'm sure you all know are APA and MLA. Um, but there's also ones such as Vancouver style and Chicago. Uh, and of course, some professors do have specific ones that they prefer. So always check with them. The library does have in information pertaining to many, if not all, of the citation, the common citation styles that the professors here use on the library's website. So if any time you're getting stuck with any of the citations, you can always go to that part of the website, and uh, they will be able to give you some information that will help you to get through. So looking at this image of privacy, if you notice at the bottom, it says source, and it says the, na the last name of the person, first name, the year that it was published, of course, uh, privacy, and of course, what, it, what type of format it is, which is an image, and retrieved from, and this is the actual URL. So if I needed to actually go and get the original image myself, I would be able to do it. Um, content from your presentations, if you're citing authors related to your pre uh, presentation, those citations would be added to your references or your bibliography slide. So never forget to put them in. You can't just use an image and say, oh, I don't need to put much more than the image itself. It does need to be cited. Uh, and of course, again, as you noticed here, if you're doing something such as an in-text citation where you're putting the image in the middle of your paper, here is the way that you're going to cite it inside of there. Uh, images used in the actual presentation that we just uh, put together um, is uh, right here for you, so you can take a good look. And this is what it would look like. Again, you're noticing name of the uh, of the person who either took the image, put the image up, who owns it, the year, the name of the image itself, or what it's about, um, what type of format it is retrieved from, and of course the link, the URL that uh, if, in case your professor wants to go check it out. Even if your paper presentation does not require APA citation style, and I do apologize, I forgot to mention that the style that was uh, used here is APA, um, you, should min you should at minimum provide the photographer and the source of the image. So again, notice at the bottom here, if your professor or the person who would like these, or where you, for whoever you're creating the document or the presentation for said that they, they aren't concerned so much as to which citation style you use, at least still put something. So photo credit uh, and then colon and then cleaver from flicker.com, at least this will at least tell everyone where you got it from and that it's not your own work. For when you're copying images, use images that contribute to the content of the work and reinforce the information, not just as inserted for as aesthetics. Um, so here we're looking at a uh, general covered by the all rights reserved sign. Uh, and of course, the image credit uh, needs to be given. And I'm not going to try saying that. But this is where it came from. To the best of your ability, ensure that the copy of the image is made from a very lawful source, um, not just some random source that you found. Be critical of the sources. Every piece of information that you're ever putting in papers or assignments, always make sure that uh, the, that you, that you uh, evaluate them and assess them to make sure that they're critical. The probability is high that an image of a television or movie um, character is under copyright uh, or protected by trademark law, regardless of the usage rights on the page. Um, and of course, we're looking at one right here um, from Big Bang Theory. Uh, the screenshot of March 15, 2016, uh, Google image results. and but these, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're all copyright because, of course, they're going to belong to the owners of the, uh, the actual uh, program. So you always have the option of requesting permission from the copyright holder to use an image. Um, it may not always be the easiest or the quickest option, though, uh, but it is an option in case you're unsure and, of course, if you have time to request it and wait for them to respond to you, and if required by the terms of the use as well. Now, on the horizon, we do have um, that the Canadian government is planning to review the state of copyright law in the fall of this year. So that will probably make some changes. Uh, we'll look out to see that coming. And of course, we'll adjust accordingly. 
The future of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TTP trade agreement, is uncertain, but Canada's copyright laws may be affected by other international trade agreements. And you should always keep informed on, these, on this important issue. Um, things that happen in between countries do affect a lot of the laws that we've put in place in our own country for things such as copyright. Now, it's always better to check than to guess. So if at any point in time you are doing um, an assignment and you have hit a roadblock and you're thinking that, oh, well, maybe I'll just figure it out by guessing or I'll take a chance and not, re and not look into it further, oh. I would suggest you don't. Please feel free to come see us at the library. Uh, the Mount Librarians are available Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 and on Saturdays and Sundays from 1 until 5. The library itself is open uh, basically from 8 a.m. until 11 Monday to Thursday and then of course 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturdays 9 to 6 p.m. and of course Sundays I believe from 9 until 9 p.m. as well um, which means that we, we are here for you and if and we can always try and help as much as we can. Now copyright and fair, fair, fair dealing is all about the balance so for more information there is an entire web page that has been created about copyright and fair dealing. Um, and as things change within the copyright guide for the mount, this is where you will find that information. And there is a URL right here if you'd like to click on it when, uh, or at least take, take note of it right now so that you keep that in your back pocket in case you'd like to review this later on on your own or when you do end up needing it uh, and you need somewhere to go and check it out. Uh, the Mount Library's list of uh, Creative Commons collections, we just took a look at that, so you know how to get to it now. Uh, it is under um, the, the research, so the, uh, on the library's main page, and from there it will give you lots of access to various uh, sources that you can use when it comes to multimedia. And last but not least, we are here, as always, to answer any questions that you may have about the copying and use and using images and charts for your assignment. Drop by the library. We're in the EMS building. You can give us a phone call as well. It is 2017. We do use email a lot. Uh, or if you'd like to try and suss it out on your own, but using the information we've made available to you, there is the link again for you to, to go through and, and just learn as much as you can on your own with the information that we provided. And there's, of course, the live chat that's also available. Um, and it's, it's on the, I believe, right-hand side of the library's main page. It was a pleasure uh, chatting with all of you tonight. And uh, hope you've learned a lot from the session. And I wish you all a good night. And Denise, I thank you very much for being with us tonight as well.